Hi guys, my name is Layla Sophia. I am an artist and fine jewelry designer. If you like contemporary fine jewelry, if you like luxury handbags, all things interiors, then I have some fun videos for you. You guys, oh my goodness, I have an epic in my mind, an epic unboxing for us today. Anybody who's been following me for the last like year plus in my first year here on YouTube, when I tell you, I had totally given up hope. I had kind of given up hope. There was a bag that was number one, like literally number one on my wish list last year. I didn't think I could ever find it again. It's a rare bag from Bottega Veneta and I, I am speechless to the fact that I found her pre-loved and I can't wait to share it with you guys. But first and foremost, if you guys are new here, thank you so, so much for tuning in. I can't wait to see you in all of my future videos. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram at Layla Sophia Jewelry. I put out videos every Wednesday, Friday and Sunday and so I cannot wait to see you guys in the next one. Okay, so I can't even believe this. I won't like, build up too much anticipation, but for those of you guys who know me, I know that my collecting is kind of split between the Row and Bottega Veneta. Those make up the majority of my collection. I also do have a really cool beaten up vintage Louis collection, but other than that, it's pretty much one-offs from other brands like Savette. I have one Fendi bag, one bag from Mag de Boutram, a couple Celine bags. I guess that's kind of third down on the list, but I only have three at the moment. But when I tell you, even though I fell in love, you know, it's been years since I've fallen in love and started collecting bags from the row, Bottega Veneta, I think really is to blame for my like gone down the rabbit hole collecting to this level, meaning this many bags of this level of curation in my own, uh, you know, again, totally apparently not humble opinion. Bottega was the one. For me, it truly just was the one. Even though I started off like totally head over heels with Daniel Lee down in that little shelf, I do have some of my Daniel Lee styles from Bottega Veneta. I just got my first Matthew Blazy piece for my 30th birthday, which I love so much. My sardine bag back there, which she needs a better display. I'm gonna try to get one of those display hanging rack things, but I'll figure that out because she deserves all the shine. I love that bag so much. And when I tell you there was a bag that I talked about immediately on my channel, again, like a year plus ago, maybe even like January, February of last year, because again, from the Matthew Blasey era, there was literally just like even an ad. And I, before I even knew that it was Bottega, it was on Pinterest, it was one of those like very kind of stark, just an image things with no words, no labels, no nothing. And I said, I need this bag. I need this bag in my life. There was also a dress that came with it. And so that's how I like cross-referenced and figured out that this was going to be like new season Bottega again a year ago. So winter 2023, when I tell you, as soon as it released, I said, I need to go see this in person. This is going to be my bag. I thought that this was going to be my 30th birthday bag. And then you'll see why. First of all, I kind of just fell in love with the sardine bag. I was heavily debating between getting <laughs> a Scabrelli bag. Scaparelli priced me out, you guys know my story, but I'm my next bag that I'm trying to save for is a Scaparelli bag. So I'm getting way ahead of myself, Sophia, get into the unboxing. Long story short, first of all, when I tell you, I'm really not joking. I thought this was like the coolest bag I'd ever seen. I literally thought this was gonna be the it bag. I thought it was so chic. I just thought it was a masterpiece. Like I literally thought it was a work of art. I was apparently wrong and it's now become like a very rare style <laughs> from Bottega Veneta, so rare. And that I'd never, I've never even seen this exact color combination in store. I'd only ever seen one in store in white and in the Intrachato version, but I was so dead set on the, like this is why I say the handbag gods bless you if you're patient enough and if you put it out there, what is exactly to a T on your wish list? You guys see, like I, let me be an example of that, that the pre-loved market is not only sustainable, not only does it help to make fashion more cyclical, it's just like an incredible way, but also you will be blessed. Or I'm, I don't know, but I'm just like, I feel like I've been super blessed because this exact color leather option was like literally number one on my wish list last year and I could never find it. Until, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I got this a couple weeks ago. I've only worn her once because I was waiting to do this video, but I don't know. Again, with my like crazy Virgo curating mind, I feel like I, only, I wanna try to limit myself to one bag unboxing a month, if that even. Last year I went a little crazy and it's so hard when there's such good deals on the pre-loved market, it's really hard. But I'm in such a full place right now in my collecting journey that I wanna kind of like 
I want to start saving for bigger items less frequently. So I cheated in February. I got two bags. I got my Civet Symmetry pochette. And then literally again, the handbag gods blessed me with my archival bag from the row from the 2012 collection, which again, blessed. That's an understatement. I'm trying to work on feeling deserving of these beautiful things. It was good for the rest of February. <laughs> I was good the first couple weeks in March. And then literally like a couple days before my half birthday, um, September 14th is my actual birthday. So March 14th is my half birthday. A couple days before I was like, doing my, you know, usual scroll. Not just looking for myself, I always look for research purposes to kind of look what's like trending, what's what the prices are going down, what's happening on the pre-loved market. And Bottega Veneta doesn't usually have bags that I'm like, oh my goodness, I've really collected the ones that I love so much. And this graced my eyeballs on the real real and I said, oh, my goodness, I waited for her to go to the 20% off literally 12 hours later and I pulled the trigger. I told you I wasn't gonna wait that long. I'm so sorry, you guys know I can't help but I'm a storyteller, I'm a sharer, okay? Clearly this is why I'm here, so thank you for bearing with me. Because without further ado, from Bottega Veneta, AKA via the Matthew Blazy era, you guys have no idea, oh my God, I'm so excited to share this with you guys. This is the very rare Bottega Veneta bandana foulard bag in dark green. Are we having a moment of silence? A collective moment of silence. Are you kidding me? I forgot that she's a tall gal, so I have to go back here with her. Can we just like, can we remember for the, for my OGs, even if anybody's new here, you can scroll back in my channel. Literally, I think any of my wish lists from like a year ago, especially in the winter time, I was dead set on getting this bag. I could not find it anywhere. Literally, I was obsessed. So any of those videos most likely will have this as like number one on my wish list. This is, this is like, I don't, I do not understand why this bag didn't have the moment of all moments. I understand, I think that the sardine bag really took over last year, especially last winter. That's when the sardine was really like in heavy rotation in people's wish lists, just out and about. I even saw it a lot here in New York City. And I'm shocked that not more people knew about this bag, not even had it, but just like knew about it in general. Because can we talk about how it is just so chic? Again, maybe it's just the New Yorker in me. Like it's so New York. It's just so cool. It's so different. And here's the reason why I wasn't like searching high and low to get it because when I found the first one that I found in store, actually the version without the metal detail and I was like, no, I need this metal detail. It makes the bag for me. It's the coolest little handle. It's very ergonomic. It just kind of like fits perfectly in the palm of your hands. And I felt like it made the bag. Again, there's a dress that's exactly like this. And when I went to go try that on for the first time in person again, like a little bit over a year ago, I picked up the bag and I went, oh, wait, what? Are you guys ready for this? This whole thing is the bag. However, why they call it the bandana bag is because these are just two flaps of leather that kind of hang over and the bag itself is teeny tiny. I've never owned a mini Jody, but I think it's akin to mini Jody size. So she is teeny tiny. I didn't quite understand until I bought it, but now I do think I understand because these little places right here are so thin. It's not like they're going to break, but they're just so thin and the way that they kind of twist the leather to make that really cool bandana style. Again, hello, it's Matthew Blazy. Think about what he does with just like a plain white tee or jeans. He'll make them in leather and this is the exact same principle, but just in a bag. So it's super cool. It's supposed to be like super laid back, super chic. Again, you can kind of just see that this is like in the inception, in the first years of him really playing around with leather and manipulating leather. And so I still think it is like the chicest thing of all time, but essentially it's kind of a mini bag disguised as a really large bag. And then they're now going to be doing some really cool, actually not even just now, like this last year, they've been coming out with really cool versions of this bag, but this was the one for me. Like I knew, I knew. And for some reason, even though I pretty much just collect brown and beige and like very nude, 
toned bags. Green is really the only other color that I like, aka my Celine by Phoebe Fallow class bag that I just got in green. It's so unexpected. And then I did like, literally, this is like so stupid. Again, I've already mentioned that I'm a Virgo in this video already once. When I did my brown bag collection, I was like, there must be some psychology to this or not psychology. Maybe it's the opposite of psychology. Like, weird spiritual zodiac thing to this and literally Virgo's color is brown and then I thought this was so interesting the secondary color even neck and neck is black which I pretty much exclusively wear and then the other two colors for us are green and yellow tell me why other than my red bag from the row which is my exception my only other oh my god and my Hermes Kelly which is blue but those are two like very you know worthy exceptions my only two colors that I like literally in my home and my collections and my wardrobe are yellow and green you, sometimes you can't make this stuff up. And so I just knew, just to show you like a real up close and personal, this dark green, which really disguises itself. Look at the color with the metal. Like it is so, so, so pretty. I just knew. I just knew that this was the one for me. And even though they are so scarce on the pre-loved market and even like any stockists that Bottega might have, I feel like this is why the things are so cool, that things are just like aligning in the perfect way in life in general. If you just like allow things to flow, this is not that kind of video, but I don't know why. Some of my favorite creators also have this bag that I didn't even understand or I didn't even remember. Tamara has this bag and even she, when she unboxed it, she was like, you've seen it here first. And I was like, I know girl, I want that bag so much. I was so jealous when she got that like literally over a year ago. And even though I'm not like a beauty girl, I don't really watch that many beauty creators. Meredith Duxbury is the one for me. She has this bag in the exact combo, I think in the white intrachato that was the only style that I had tried on previous to seeing this one. And so I just, I'm like, yeah. It's just a rare, random thing, but you know, I see it. I see like why I love people's taste so much. And so I know nobody might care about this. Literally, this might be the most random unboxing, but for me, like I am just, I'm thrilled. I'm so excited about this piece. But of course, most importantly, I want to hear all of your thoughts down below. Who remembers me literally drooling <laughs> over this bag last year for so long? I finally did it. I finally did it. The handbag gods really, really, really are looking down on me. And I am just like, I'm so thrilled. I feel fuller. Like. The more in tune with my collecting voice I am, the less I feel like I need things. I feel super confident in where my collection is and I'm just so grateful. And so I don't know, it's not that I'm gonna stop collecting or only get like really gigantic, really massive priced purchases. I feel like, I don't know, I feel really, really good. Watch me then come to you guys with a confessional unboxing in the next two weeks, but I don't know, this just, like, it, it rounds out my collection in a really, really beautiful way, and I just feel so blessed. Let me know if you guys want me to share my full Bottega collection now. I did want, I did a video like this last year, but I don't think I had my sardine or now this new bag, so I don't know, that would be kind of fun if anybody's interested. As always, thank you guys so, so, so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in my next one. Bye, guys.